Hello everyone and welcome! We're back at uh, painting some Warhammer and it's time I paint the giveaway project that I, I have been in promising. No video last week because I've been busy uh, setting uh, this guy up and now I can finally get started. So stick around to find out what um, you can do to try to win this guy. I'm not gonna give it away just yet. It's gonna be somewhere around the middle of the uh, show just to keep you uh, hooked for as long as possible, <laughs> so to speak. All right, so uh, if you enjoy this, uh, this uh, content and if you uh, want to have more giveaways, I'm not promising any anytime soon, please subscribe, like, and share. There's also another reason to uh, subscribe. Uh, in order to win this uh, little guy because like I said, I am giving him away So without further ado, let's um, Talk a little bit about what I'm doing right now right now. I am uh, Giving him the base coat and I am using an appropriate color for him, which is of course corn red Now there will be two more uh, steps in airbrushing him for the base color one where I mix um, a bit of purple into the red to give him a shadow layer from the uh, underside from down towards up and a highlight where I mix a bit of troll slayer orange into the mix and I spray that from above that will do for the base coats as it was pointed out in other videos some people would like to know a little bit more about Warhammer lore and the lore behind the miniatures that I paint. So let's do that a bit now. I don't have anything prepared, so I'm going off the cuff, so to speak, and I'm going to touch like the generalistic uh, points of lore that I personally, personally know from uh, reading books and from other, of course, uh, YouTube uh, lore channels, because that's where I got most of my uh, information. So, without further ado, let's talk about uh, a bit about these uh, World Eater Terminators. I don't know anything specific about this character, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the Legion and how it came to be, who they were, and so on and so forth. Ah. Uh... Right, I remembered. So, I don't know how far back I want to go with this, but let's give it a shot. Basically, the God Emperor of Mankind, which of course at that time, point in time was just uh, the Emperor, uh, made his 20 Astartes Legion to, in order to conquer the galaxy. I'm going by the bare bones here. Uh, one of these legions were called the Warhounds. Each legion in turn was of course led by a Primarch. Unfortunately before they could uh, take command of their legions they were scattered to the warp and these Primarchs ended up uh, being raised on alien. The Primarch of the Warhounds was going to be <sighs> Angron himself. Angron, most people speculate that he was supposed to be a very empathetic Primarch that could take away uh, other uh, people's suffering or uh, negative thoughts and take them onto himself and become something good overall. And while we get to see a bit of these glimpses in his Primark book, uh, the, he was quickly corrupted, let's go with that, by the planet that he uh, landed on, which was uh, Nyseria, Nyseria, or something like that. I'm really bad with Warhammer names. Uh, but in on that planet uh, there were plenty of uh, powerful uh, high lords so to speak 
they, I think they were called high rollers, who entertained themselves through gladiatorial matches. And Angron was forced into a series of matches where he always, of course, triumphed, but uh, he tried to do it in the most humane possible and even became friends with most of the gladiators, but the high rollers, high rollers could not have that, so they forced him further and further to uh, commit acts of violence against them, and finally, when all else fails, they implanted him with the butcher's nails, which were never designed for Primark brains, and so... Uh, basically always gave him a headache and uh, he was constantly angry and so on and so forth. The World Eaters uh, story begins only when the Emperor finally found his long lost son, when he found Angron, and handed over his legion, the Warhounds, over to the command of Angron. Now, I'm not going to get the politics of Angron and why the Emperor did what he did. That's a whole other topic <laughs> for another day. But once Angron was in charge of the Warhounds, he quickly renamed uh, the Legion in, or in honor of his fallen comrades on Nosiria. And since they, his fallen comrades were named, they named themselves the Eater of Cities, Angron renamed the Legion the World Eaters. And that is how the Legion's, uh, the Legion, the, war, uh, the World Eater uh, Legion came to be. Now, of course, Angron couldn't just leave it at that, so he, of course, had to do something even more stupid, let's say. And he made all of his warriors get uh, similar implants to his own. Uh, and they were called, of course, the Butcher's Nails. They were... Definitely modified by the Mechanicus at that point. Mechanicum at that point. Yet, Adeptus Mechanicus. Yes, Adeptus Mechanicum at that point. And um, basically, it made all the uh, Astartes in the Legion uh, crave battle and always want to be in battle. If not, they would have massive headaches and always be angry and could barely control themselves. That's what the uh, nails did. Alright, I'm going to take a short break and tell you that I'm working on the details. I used a lot of uh, lead belcher, rune lord brass, a lot of metallics, uh, black for the cabling. And uh, you can see for yourselves, I'm not going to go too much into detail. A lot of this uh, model was just very fine detailed work and it was really, really awesome painting. Back to the world eaters. Um, that is the short version, of course, of the World Eaters. Uh, notable uh, things that have happened were, of course, during the change when Angron became uh, the general in charge of uh, the legions, there were several decimations. <laughs> Because um, Angron um, didn't like the way they did things. They, he often gave them impossible tasks to complete. And when they failed, he would uh, make uh, either make them butcher each other. Or would just go on a rampage and just butcher his own sons and his own soldiers. Uh, this kept going on for years and years and so on and so forth until finally, um, or no, uh, until finally, of course, um, Abaddon was corrupt. No, Abaddon, did I just say Abaddon? Oh my god, until Horus, Horus uh, was corrupted by chaos and then finally, uh, not finally, but then uh, this gave Angron a reason to uh, turn against the Emperor. Not necessarily to follow uh, Horus into rebellion, rather 
to have a chance to uh, fight against his father. And I completely agree with this point of view because, again, the Emperor was kind of a dick when uh, he found Angron. Uh, instead of seeing him for a troubled son, he kind of saw like a broken tool and didn't want to take the time to stop and fix it. Uh, at some point it was hinted that maybe they could have done something. Well, then in other books it's mentioned that uh, it nothing could be done. But in either case, um, the fact remains that uh, nobody uh, actually managed to fix uh, Angron by removing his nails and so on. He was left... Uh, in a broken state of mind and he was unable to properly coordinate his uh, legion and they were all um, broken for it now this is not a typical uh, world eaters um, space marine this is a terminator what are terminators terminators are special troops usually the elite and usually only the first uh, company of the um, legion would receive terminator armor terminator armor was much heavier uh, it granted uh, better survivability it turned an already uh, if a space marine is like a tank this one is like a super heavy tank and they received all this durability, firepower, and um, strength in the detriment of speed and bulkiness because you, they were not as fast as uh, just power armored marines. So that is the difference between a normal space marine and a terminator space marine. Now, a uh, fun fact. Um, the uh, Angron's Guard were, of course, uh, Space Marines in Terminator armor. And the size of the armor and the bulkiness of it actually made them quite slower than normal Marines. And they were often left behind. Compared to a Primark, they were downright uh, snail-like. And while they were uh, there to supposedly guard Angron and to protect him... They were often um, uh, left behind by Angron himself and by other uh, world eaters. And so uh, Angron hated them uh, as he felt they were pulling him back and often cursed them and uh, belittled them that uh, they were no good and couldn't carry the fight and so on and so forth. So, seeing a uh, World Eater Terminator is actually quite rare because uh, the Terminator plate was not really favored by uh, World Eaters. But there are a few exceptions, of course. And that is what uh, um, this model represents. Also, I think that this model actually works well with 30k rather than 40k. Uh, the difference between 30k and 40k being that oh, one, uh, 30k uh, is uh, referring to the setting um, during the Horus Heresy where all of the legions uh, were in full strength, sort of, and all of them had stuff. And it's mostly just um, a battle between space marines, whether they're um, on the loyalist side or on the traitor side, they're not. You, you can't really um, talk about corruption until towards the end, like the Siege of Terra books, where it's obvious that they have been very, very corrupted. But other than that, it's mostly just you know space marines versus space marines, especially in like uh, the early battles. And that's why I was saying that uh, this, I would think that this particular model actually fits better with 30k. Not saying that the world eater of uh, considerable um, will 
could not have uh, kept his armor and uh, alive, especially in uh, the Eye of Terror, where, as due to the warp, which is like another dimension, um, time is not exactly as is, and that is why the traitors have been able to basically survive for 10,000 years between 30k and 40k and uh, a particular strong-willed individual could have uh, survived all this time and he kept his uh, power armor his uh, again terminator power armor in relatively good shape Fun fact, uh, actually, the World Eaters uh, had a white base coat. Uh, the reason that uh, they sort of switched to like a red color is because uh, due, to, due to their uh, preference for melee weapons and chain axes is that they tended to be covered in gore by the end of a battle and once they were corrupted enough they kind of um, uh, had enough of you know cleaning their armor and just stuck with uh, all the gore and <laughs> and blood on their uh, white armor and it, it eventually over the course of battles years and centuries it just became red and they just stuck with it uh, let's talk a little bit about this guy this guy is already sort of corrupted but it's clear that it's a he doesn't have any mutations which is a thing chaos does but uh, the symbols on his uh, pauldron and on his um, belt they are all corn symbols and chaos so yes um corn the god of war and fighting basically uh is the patron god chaos god of uh the world eaters because they of course enjoy fighting corn loves fights it's a match made in heaven uh what else should i mention um of course the most famous Astartes uh, world eater, of course, is Karn the Betrayer. Uh, I'm not going to go to many details, but he's the only one that could get and talk down Angron and manage to convince him to um, take over and guide the Legion to the best of his abilities, which can be debatable whether or not that was a good idea or not instead of you know just jettisoning <laughs> Angron uh, into the nearest sun which is something that probably should have been done that would have spared a lot of people uh, a lot of grief let's uh, say uh, what else what else what else can I tell you mm talk some funny stuff I talk some stuff ah uh, uh, let's uh, let me explain a little bit what I'm doing here uh, I'm adding a green glow effect on his um, hood uh, on his yeah hood the recess of his head that's where his head is gonna be I saw it in the box art and it looked really cool so I tried to do it I think I used some really bright green uh, I don't think it was a technical paint, but the warp glow or something like that. But it was really, really um, bright, and I thinned it down as much as I could. So I made like a glaze or a layer, a really thin down layer, and just slather it all over to give a tint. And it came out looking really, really good on the uh, red base coat. Uh, more working on the trims. Uh, fun fact, because you know. I can always just uh, fall back on another favorite story of mine when it comes to world eaters and I can actually squeeze the guys that I really like which are the space wolves and some of you might know this a uh, little story but a little uh, introduction uh, the space wolves are considered the emperor's executioners especially Lehman Russ their primarch 
the space wolves being another uh, legion another uh, one of the emperor's legion at some point uh, Lehman Russ under Malkador's instructions which is we'll get it to Malkador at some point in time uh, Lehman Russ decided to teach Angron a lesson and so uh, they he actually got his legion to fight Angron's legion to fight the world eaters and Angron himself he went down and fought and they fought and they were ferocious sort of like ish barbarians um, and they all gave it their best and the two prime marks fought and they were really powerful with both of them scoring hits and wounding each other but at the end of the battle Angron had Lehman Russ pinned and almost uh, uh, had through the killing blow, but held back, just showing that Angron did have self-control if he truly wanted. But he was trying to also point out to uh, Lehman that he was the better fighter and that he won. Yet, despite this, Lehman, when he wanted to, he could be very tactical and think ahead. So, despite the fact that he maybe let, it was not clear, neither in the story nor in what they were saying, maybe sort of let Angron win and uh, basically tanked all of his blows and was willing to show that he uh, he could take it he pointed out the fact that they were in a kill box made by all of the space wolves because uh, like 50 um, uh, Stardis uh, space wolves had all of their bolters point blank pointed at Angron and while it, it might not have been enough to kill him, it would have certainly ruined his day. <laughs> because it, it's clearly obvious that um, uh, he was in serious danger, even Angron, despite uh, uh, him beating uh, Lima. Now, I'm willing to debate it and talk with you all you want, but I'm still calling uh, Russ the winner in this situation because I'm pretty sure if Russ wanted it to, he could have actually fought uh, Angron way better and probably defeated him, but then that would not have been a proper lesson for Angron. Not that Angron actually learned anything from the lesson that Lehman was trying to teach him, but uh, it was his attempt at explaining to uh, Angron in a, in a sense that uh, Lehman saw how he should act and how he should take care of himself um, and uh, be a better uh, leader for his legion. Now, with that anecdote, uh, while we're not exactly at the midpoint, I would like to tackle uh, the issue at hand. Not because I'm running out of ideas of what to say, because that is also truly happening. But uh, rather, that uh, I guess it's time. So, if you want to, uh, to receive this miniature and stick around till the end to see the final shots, because there will be, and you'll definitely on them if you want to to a chance to win this miniature all you have to do is subscribe to my channel and comment on this video with blood for the blood god which is of course uh corn's favorite saying and uh the world eaters of course cannot go a, a day without i'm kidding <laughs> a minute without uh, uh demanding blood for the blood god yeah all right so again if you want this guy i will be shipping it to you if you win and uh all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and 
comment down with blood for the blood god. All right, what else is there to talk about um, with this guy? This guy was really fun to paint. Uh, I forgot to mention this because uh, it w he was fun to paint. Uh, even the face, I finally happy with like the brush control, and uh, that I have. I'll get that uh, in a few uh, minutes, uh, probably. But the details were really, really easy to paint once the base color was done. So I I think I'm really, really going to enjoy uh, painting my uh, Space, Marine, Space Marine arm, which will probably be an awesome challenge now that I'm thinking about it. I will probably do like a 24-hour challenge where I just paint an entire army of Space Marines. But... That's not coming anytime soon, because I still want to do the turnits first so that I can um, be happy with those and have those filled, and then I will tackle all my space moves. But I'm working towards that, slowly and surely. And if you want to see me, again, subscribe, and uh, for a chance to win this guy, uh, comment down below in the comment section of the video. What else to say about uh, World Eaters? Hmm. I honestly don't think I know that much more interesting lore other than giving massive spoilers but at the same time having some awesome moments, but they're not necessarily related to this character or World Eater in general, rather than named characters. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's see uh, how many named characters I can think of that are uh, World Eaters that actually stuck in my mind. So, uh, just a heads up, I have uh, read all of the uh, Horus Heresy series and plenty of 40k books, but none of them focused solely on World Eaters. I'm not a real Chaos fan. There are a few books that I find interesting regarding the Chaos, and I will get to them in a moment. So, uh, from the uh, Horus Heresy, uh, in interesting uh, characters, not necessarily characters, but, you know, members of the Legion. So, uh, like any other Legion, the World Eaters did have a Librarius. And, of course, since they're Psychers, uh, they really didn't, couldn't actually accept uh, the Butcher's Nails because uh, they just died. Literally, when the Butcher's Nails were implanted in their heads, they simply just died. Horribly, probably with uh, explosive effects, but it was clear that uh, it was just been uh, murdered to at the butcher's nails. So um, the few remaining librarians that um, uh, remained after the butcher's nails were implanted into the uh, legion uh, found a way to actually kill themselves <laughs> by. Uh, trying to save their Primarchs and combining into a Gestalt consciousness to uh, enter uh, Angron's mind while he was in like a coma or something in order to see if they can uh, bring him back. Uh, that of course uh, mostly kill killed like most of them with like one surviving I think and he died soon afterwards. But it was a pretty pretty awesome moment and that I did not see any other psychers do that in like 30k or 40k yet I'm not saying or I just might not have seen but it was really awesome moment and through that they also gave us a flashback into Angron's uh, earlier years on Nusiria. Uh, of course Karn is always absolutely amazing and I have to say that the best moment, the best non-Primark moment in the entire heresy will always remain when Karn beats the shit out of Erebus. 
So to paint you a picture, uh, Erebus does an Erebus thing, oh, fuck Erebus, uh, by killing um, Argyle Tall, uh, which is another word better, but he was uh, Karn's best friend. He was literally, they were literally best friends. They fought together, not against each other, they fought together in the cage and always basically till first blood because they didn't want to prove to anybody they were better and they often lose because they were always trying new stuff and they were having fun and they didn't mind it despite uh, Karn having the book nails and he was really okay with this and he was happy and then in like one of the happiest moments uh, of his life uh, Erebus comes and right beside Karn or not, no, no, I don't think Karn was there, because if Karn was there, uh, Erebus would have been dead instantly. Uh, but uh, right when uh, the world was going really good, um, Erebus kills Argon Tall, and so the uh, Karn is really, really pissed. And of course, Erebus being Erebus, decides to show off uh, all his mighty god, chaos gods given powers, and... In the tradition that uh, the world eaters had on their ships of gladiatorial fights, uh, which had like multiple settings, like uh, first blood, third blood, uh, near death, uh, or sanguine extremis, which literally meant until death. So bear in mind, like uh, Karn always was like, oh, I'm just gonna fight until somebody loses. Uh, until somebody loses a bit of blood, then we're done. Well, no more fighting. We're okay. We're gold. This time, Erebus was like in the cage, fighting anybody who would fight him and showing off how awesome he was. And he was beating uh, uh, World Eaters left and right. And here comes uh, Karn after finding out that Darker Paul is dead. And he just goes into the cage with. Uh, Erebus and just goes like sanguine extremist we're gonna fight to the death uh, and he just starts beating the shit up of Erebus and I mean beating him so badly that uh, by the end of the fight Erebus is on the g floor begging the chaos gods to save him and praying missing his arm a leg and several other chunks of him probably and uh, Karn is like uh, putting his chain axe right on top of his spine and getting ready to kill him and then he just vanishes Erebus the little shit because he can't even die properly right well that was uh, for Karn and uh, other than that there were other uh, named characters world eaters in the um, uh, heresy that I found interesting but not that much and nothing that sticks to mind during the actual Siege of Terra I think there was another apothecary that was trying to uh, pull the Legion together but yeah <laughs> that didn't really work um, there were some really cool scenes uh, there with like the despair where it gets them that even Astartes seem desperate at some points and realizing what the extent of the destruction they have caused and how hopeless everything is becoming and by the end it just doesn't even matter anymore to them. They're just, you know, complete complete another barbarians they can barely think because that's how the butcher's nails uh work right uh on to a bit more uh <laughs> i don't want to say modern a bit more contemporary because you know 40k and um uh, i absolutely loved and they showed what um world eater um not a world eater a warhound uh a space marine could have been if they would have just had the proper primark 
And I, uh, again, I'm talking about here. You're really going to find this odd, but I absolutely loved the world leader. I keep forgetting the name. Don't I don't want to look him up, but he was awesome. You'll know who I'm talking about. The world leader in um, Gene Father. He was uh, Fabius Biles. Uh, most trusted uh, acolyte let's go with that and he was an apothecary from of course uh, the world eaters and he also had the butcher's nails but through his research and through cocktails of um, drugs and uh, other substances he was able to keep the butcher's nails at bay and he was something of a philosopher warrior he enjoyed experimenting and um we i know those were horrible experiments on human beings and so on and so forth but that's not the point what i'm trying to say is that he could he could have coherent thoughts and control himself perfectly in order to conduct such experiments and uh, he was still an incredible warrior fi of fighting prowess again using two swords he was a master swordsman not necessarily uh, you know like um, Sivatar or um, Sigismund and so on and so forth, some of the greats but he was good. He was good. Good enough to give most other opponents a uh, pause to think about what they were uh, doing and who they were facing. And his that scene and his moment of uh, shine is when he literally just stops all of the um, draw cocktails that were keeping the butcher's nails at bay. And he becomes a beast just ransacking through like dozens of enemies astartes and normal humans just like goes to town and they're like how is he doing this how is he fighting us at this particular level we saw he was good before but now he's just too good too insane uh yeah no that that was like I, I I burst out laughing and go like holy shit that is insane that is something that is truly uh on an epic scale oh right well this is mostly like all of the things that I can probably think about the world eaters that is a lot I have been talking for like half an hour about these guys uh, just from the top of my head if I were to like you know make uh, actually make a script that might be something but uh, yeah I, I don't know so instead I'm gonna take a pause while I think of something further to add about uh, the world eaters and talk a little bit about uh, the um, there's something that I noticed right now while uh, doing the voiceovers uh, is that uh, I messed up a little bit uh, the recording of this video because it's not uh, full 1080p uh, in the sense that uh, I actually filled it at 1920 by 900 something because I must have clicked differently on the resolution it doesn't look bad, uh, but it's not what I kind of wanted. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll have to make sure that I don't do this mistake again. So, again, I apologize if you find it a little different than uh, my other videos. And, of course, uh, later on, I think I may have mixed and matched uh, some formatting and we I'm going to go back to like full uh, 1080p so again I'm sorry if this is a little bit jarring uh, what else is there to talk about uh, the, the details were really really fun and easy to paint uh, 
and I really learned to take like very very little paint on the brush and also I think I found my favorite brush so to speak it's just the Studel uh, S brush but it holds the tip really really well and uh, I think I took care of this one like the most because I have another one that's just this but I think that one might have gotten some paint in the bristles because it doesn't hold the tip as well as this one it's good but this one is like the best so I, I'm actually just using this one to put paint on minis and other uh, 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 and other the brushes to mix the paints. Yeah, I keep thinking and wanting to say pen or pencil, and I'm like, why would you say pen or pencil? It's a brush. But but brush wasn't coming to the tip of my tongue, so to speak. I initially planned on doing like a room Lord Press undercoat followed by progressive layers of Retributor Gold and Rune Fang Steel. But, when I started adding the, uh, later on, when I'll start adding the Retributor Gold, it really popped out over it and completely covered it, not blending nor not necessarily, you know, like making a difference in between. So I decided to uh, leave it like that and just uh, added a few uh, Retributor Gold parts on uh, all of the pieces and all of his uh, rims and I left the Rune Fang Steel uh, outside. There was There were a lot of going back and forth and fixing a lot of mistakes that I made because it's really easy to uh, well, spill on the base coat and um, I, and having to fix that. Now, having a bit of corn red is uh, to fix any problems is great. But bear in mind that I actually used two two extra shades of corn red one mixed with violet for shadows and one to to give like a proper glow from the above now i swear i don't see the call the, the the difference in color when i look at the miniature the moment i tried to correct with a bit of corn red straight out of the pot just diluted um where I made a mistake over the uh, highlight, so to speak, with the Troll Slayer Orange. I could all of a sudden see uh, a difference in what I was painting versus what the rest of the color was around the affected area. So, this is a good thing, and one of the uh, main reasons that I wanted drop bottles and that I moved all of my the paints into dropper bottles is that I can replicate the exact same um, formula for the paint. So I knew that I put a 50-50 mix of Troll Slayer all range and Corn Red into the airbrush when I did the top-down layer for the highlight. So I just took a, a single drop of corn red with a single drop of Troll Slayer Orange 50-50 and I was able to uh, fix that as well. Now I poured my heart and soul and I tried to make this uh, miniature as awesome as possible as I could and I think I did. I spent nearly 10 hours making this it might not seem like so from uh, this footage especially since it has roughly about an hour and 15 minutes but there is a reason for that one it's called editing and two the vi this video is sped up 200 percent and i also had to uh leave a lot of footage on the cutting room floor so uh yeah there's that trust me when i steal this 
mixing paints, uh, prepping everything, deciding on the colors, all of that, getting the airbrush ready, cleaning the airbrush, all of that, be from the time I assembled the miniature until I was happy with it, it's roughly 10 hours. So yeah, if you like this work, I'm hoping uh, you do and you will keep the mini as is and you can integrate it in your army. Uh, or uh, if you just want a display piece and you're happy with my work, again, awesome. Uh, if not, if you can do a better job than me, ho, oh, hell yeah, go ahead, strip the miniature, paint it however you like. Uh, just send me a pic afterwards. Show me what, uh, how uh, much better you are than me. Uh, another reason uh, that uh, you will see later on that I left the base uh, completely empty is exactly the same. If somebody who wins it does have an army, it uh, he will find it he or she will find it much uh, easier to um, integrate uh, this miniature into his own army by simply making uh, the bases look similar. So that is why I left the base as empty as I could. I don't want to add stuff to it and then make you get your own base for it or so on. Or you might not have uh, necessarily. If that is the case, um, I will uh, talk a little bit with the winner if he wants something done on the base or not. We'll see. Uh... What else? What else? Um, I did use a bit of black on some of the um, rubbery bits in between the legs and so on. Uh, in theory, that's like the black carapace or something. And of course, on his uh, lantern-mounted uh, thingy targeting sensor. I don't know what it was. And um, I'm really happy with how the little lantern uh, on the other side of uh, his uh, head came out. I absolutely like it. I need to find a better angle for my camera though, and that's something I really want to work on. Ooh, really running out of topics to talk about, but uh, I really like it. Uh, all right. Uh, I showed you in the previous uh, homework, uh, <laughs> well, that's housework, that's the one, housework that I brought my old studio to the house and that I plan on being able to work from there as well. So far, I was not able to do any of that because uh, I was really, really tired, but that will be coming soon. And yeah, uh, I was able to complete this miniature because I took a few days off from working uh, on the house and decided to spend it by getting this guy ready for you guys and hopefully uh, somebody who really likes this guy wins him <sighs> all right uh the weapon i didn't really follow the plan on the box art so uh, I decided to make my own color scheme and uh, used uh, Lead Belcher and Rune Lord Brass as well as some Retributor Gold uh, on his uh, on the bits of the weapon. I was thinking of making the skulls on the back uh, bone color, but I decided against it, uh, seeing how well the Rune Lord Brass looked when I uh, put it on. And yes, it, it looks absolutely awesome with the red, the Rune Lord Brass, the Blood Belcher, and uh, the Retributor Gold all over uh, the weapon in certain positions. Okay, uh, 25 minutes to go. I'm really running out of ideas what to talk about it. Uh, the World Eaters and Chaos. Hmm. So, let me ask you this. Uh, I mentioned before earlier that uh, Angron fought Lehman Russ. Who do you think won? 
uh, Angron or Lehman Russ during that fight. Uh, let's see what else. Um, do you think if Angron would have either been killed or um, never found by the Emperor, do you think that the World Eaters would have had a better or worse fate? You know what is kind of odd and now that I think about it? So the Emperor had 20 sons, what, 20? One, uh, and two of them were never f were redacted, right? But now that I think about it, uh, would it be a possibility that they were never actually found? And how come, despite the fact that? Uh, Segmentum Pacificus is barely explored, which is again another uh, thing that Warhammer fans will get. Uh, basically, the galaxy is split into four segments uh, Pacificus, Ultramar, uh, and I don't really know the other two, but Pacificus is like the whole western part of the galaxy, which is barely explored, and they barely have. Um, any you know important worlds over there how come all of the primarchs were in like the all of the explored parts of the galaxy how come none of the primarchs were like west that seems a little odd right and if so, how come, uh, how, how was it that uh, the uh, the emperor managed to find like all of them, and how come none of them are still like you know lost? Hmm. Just a uh, a food for thought. And while I'm at food for thought and possibilities and so on and so forth, tell me. What do you think are the chances that my favorite Primark, Lehman Ross, will be the next Primark to return? <laughs> I'm really, uh, really, really looking forward to that moment in time where, like, Lehman Ross shows up and he meets with the lion and they go, like, Ah, oh, let I'm going to... Uh, one of them is like, I, I remember the feud, and the other one's like, Oh, buddy, just drop it, just leave it, and they all hug it out. I, I, that's what I want to see. But uh, honestly, I really want Lehman Ross back. Uh, during the Lion Book, um, <laughs> during the Lion Book, the fact that uh, the first Primarch that the demon that's trying to trick a uh, lion uh, becomes is actually Lehman Ross kind of says a lot, right? I mean, I'm not saying that says that the next one will be Lehman, but what I'm saying is that it shows that despite, you know, them being at odds with each other, Lion, the Lion and Lehman were actually, you know, quite fond of each other, so to speak, quite, um, they, they cared for one another, that's what I'm trying to say. Despite them, you know, being like, oh, I don't like that guy, I don't like that guy, I don't like... And despite the fact that, you know, uh, their feud uh, is kept alive by their sons <laughs> for 10,000 years with them uh, throwing one punch at each other each time they meet. <laughs> That's absolutely hilarious, and I think it's, it's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. What else to talk about? What else to talk about? I'm running out of ideas. If this was a live stream, I could easily have, you know, like, uh, asked you guys what you guys want to talk about. But unfortunately, this is not, and I don't know if ever I will be able to uh, make one of those because they seem like a lot of hassle. 
like a lot lot of hassle uh, but then again recording an hour long uh, voiceover is also quite the hassle I could have sped up the footage even more but uh, I, I kind of wanted to show you guys the process and the uh, painstaking work that I did getting this guy ready so yeah uh, one last thing that I do want to mention about this miniature and how I want to ship it. Uh, now, at the moment, there is absolutely no varnish on the model whatsoever. I do plan on giving it a coat of matte varnish to seal everything in and to make sure that it holds up better transport as well as tabletop if uh, anybody decides to uh, play him. So, yeah, there's uh, that. Don't worry, the model will be, uh, will not chip. I really hope it won't. I plan on packing it more. Uh, okay, just another reminder, uh, if you didn't catch it, uh, if you want to, a chance to win this guy, uh, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and comment below with blood for the blood god hey and uh, while you're at it leave a like that also helps so all right let's talk a little bit about uh world eaters again and let's oh no wait, wait, wait. i have another uh fun uh, you, you you can see me scraping off a little something off his uh, armor uh, arm uh, joint over there. That is a fun little uh, solution I found to keeping the limbs temporarily attached while I did the um, airbrushing for the overall coat. I used double-sided tape, which I placed over there it can be easily uh, taken off and it keeps all of the pieces together and they can be sprayed together to give the uh, lighting effect that you want for example when uh, you're doing uh, either OSL or not that I'm going to try anytime soon <laughs> but um, rather uh, when you want to do a base coat and you're doing those like I mentioned those overall tones for highlights and shadows and so on and so forth. Uh, just using a bit of double-sided tape, that actually did the trick. For the chain uh, fist arm, uh, his other arm, not, not the one I'm currently working on, uh, I used the exact same method. I took a Tau drone support stick and I wrapped a bit of double-sided tape on its end and uh, twisted it to make like a ball over there of uh, <laughs> tiny glue and I was able to uh, attach the arm over there and be able to hold it like that and um, paint it. For the gun I was able to stick a toothpick in one of the holes I drilled so that actually worked out awesome. And uh, yeah, that's how I did it. I found a lot of uh, fun materials to use uh, that really, really lessen my um, workload. And while I know that the box art and that Games Workshop really, really likes uh, edge highlights and tiny, every uh, edge in a miniature needs to have its own line and stuff. I am not liking that on miniature, so I did not add it. If you feel like you want to do it and you have the skill to do it, go ahead, do it. I don't mind. It's your miniature once you win it. All right. Uh, and like I wanted to say, in case you couldn't tell by this uh, miniature alone, but yes, um, most of the world eaters prefer chain weapons because of their uh, gory... Uh, side effects, so to speak. Uh, so, as you can see, and they really don't prefer that much uh, ranged weapons, weaponry. This was a, also a thing with the Warhounds, 
but it became clearly uh, accentuated and kind of like the motif of the world eaters. And to be honest, I kind of like the name the Warhounds better than the World Eaters, but I, I know it's, you know, scary, they're, they're the Eater of Worlds. Uh, the Warhounds are just so much more awesome, in my personal opinion. I would have loved to have a uh, Warhound Legion. Not only because, uh, you know, like, uh, the implications, but, you know, it, it would have been funny throughout the thing when they're referring to the Warhound. Are they referring to, like, uh, the Titans or the Legion or the so on and so forth? But I'm pretty sure that's the reason that Games Workshop uh, decided to um, change their name at some point because I don't think they were initially like uh you know like rogue trader the world eaters i think they were initially just the warhounds and then uh since they introduced like uh the warhound titans uh, it would have been a bit confusing but speaking of warhound titans <laughs> no, no no i'm kidding i'm kidding I, I don't have i don't have the money to buy one of those i want one of those I really, really want one of those, but um, I don't know whenever I will be able to afford one. Hopefully, um, sometime in the future. <laughs> Alright, um, yeah, I went off on a tangent. Uh, my brain does that from time to time. Um, I think of something, something is related to that thing and so on. Uh, painting the head, uh, I went with a base coat of um, Kislev Flesh and I was able to get the perfect consistency this time. No more streaking weird stuff that I had previously when trying to paint the skin. But then again, I used medium this time instead of water. Using medium is definitely the way to go when you want uh, a thin coat instead of uh, water because uh, it somehow increases the pigment while increasing the, it, it, the pigment stays the same while increasing the flow with something that water does not. The point is I was able to get like a very good, a perfect coverage, a literal perfect coverage in like uh, one and a half coats. Why I mean one and a half, there were a few dots here and there that I uh, reinforced uh, later on. Once uh, I had the base coat, I was able to fill in the details like the um, pipes, the nails on his head with black and I did the metallic parts with lead belcher of course. I used lead belcher on his teeth as well because they, especially in the box art, they gave out a metallic vibe. Uh, and I did a highlight on uh, the head with flayed one flesh to uh, on all of the raised edges to highlight and to bring some more color. And I was not really liking it because the um, it flayed one flesh was clearly visible and I didn't like it. And so I used a bit of seraphim sepia and more like a glaze than a shade to fill in like the resources to give shadows to the cheekbones and stuff but rather to uniform the colors all over his head and that worked absolutely wonderful and it looks amazing it does i'm ha i'm more than happy it's my best head so far i haven't done that many but the ones that i did I wish I had done like this, but then again, Seraphim Sepia is a rather new addition. It was really hard to get. I, I, I don't think they make it anymore or they don't, they don't put it uh, as often. I, I really tried searching for it on multiple uh, hobby stores. So, yeah, I found it and I'm happy that I have it uh, for as long as it lasts. 
Uh, yeah, I mentioned the lips. I used the. I mentioned the teeth. I used a bit of Bugman's glow on his lips as well to highlight them because you know they're much more. They should be much more uh, colorful since they're highly vascularized. And uh, I used Mephiston Red for his eyes. I know it doesn't, but again, bear in mind that he is indeed a Chaos Terminator corrupted by Chaos, specifically Corn. So, yes, he is really, uh, you know, like angry and his eyes glow red and so on and so on. Oh boy, ah. Yeah, like I said, the finest brush, I love that uh, uh, brush. The finest tip I can get on that one is absolutely amazing. And I think I'm going to get a few more of those. Hopefully, I will have more and uh, I'll be able to use them much, much better. But I also think that... I should like you use them how I use them on this miniature and specifically uh, paint the color immediately uh, clean the brush perfectly and just use the same brush for another color and just rinse and repeat over and over and over and over again because this way I always keep my brush perfectly clean if I immediately wash it after using it with a color if I will have two or more brushes i will be tempted to like let the brush down for a bit while i just pick up another one with a different color to either fix my mistake or move on to doing something else i also really appreciated that this um model did not really have any leather straps or anything like that um so there's that so it was mostly just metallic stuff which is nice in its own and I really like the way that uh, I was able to paint the chains as well and everything else I'm really really running out of ideas of what to tell you this is just mostly me uh, finishing up all of the details i know i don't do like uh, a lot of highlights but a lot of different shades and the shadows are and the shadows and highlights are not that visible but i like it and this is something that i'm happy with giving away and to a standard that i am truly happy with what i can deliver like i said feel free to uh, take it apart, uh, repose it, or whatever you want to do with it, or paint it again differently, it's all up to you. I just um, uh, did what the audience so far asked, and that I paint the model before giving it away. If you win it and don't like it, uh, feel free to uh, change it up and do a better job than me. Just, you know, send me a pic. Hey, look, I did a way better job than you. Well, uh, what else is there to say? I'm thinking of whether or not starting some chaos things, but nah, I'm not really a chaos fan. And if ever I'm going to start a chaos army, it will just, I think I mentioned this before, it will definitely be a Slanesh army with like a Keeper of Secrets. I really like that model. Now that I think about it, maybe even a demon Fulgrim. I really like that guy. I saw the resin bust. It looks absolutely amazing. I'm assuming it's going to be a pain in the ass to actually assemble and paint that thing. But just plopping that on the table and just or just having that somewhere in your uh, display case. Damn, right next to like a Keeper of Secrets and some Demonets. Oh god, that would look so freaking awesome. Yeah, that that's my kind of jam. 
so again some people don't like it some people like it more than uh, others but uh, corn and chaos are not really my cup of tea what I am definitely thinking about uh, starting next uh, after I complete all of my pile of shame probably not is definitely an orc army because for that one I will Definitely be making some gargants. <laughs> uh, I will uh, just, um, you know, casually wait for my boys to um, break some of their toys. <laughs> and then just um, appropriate them. No, 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 sorry, sorry. Loot them. <laughs> Loot them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or keep them. All right. I'm getting off topic. We're talking chaos and I'm talking words. This is a chaos uh, terminator giveaway and i'm talking about orcs i'm like uh really really special all right uh i'm seriously getting to the end uh of the video but uh, before i do that i wanted to mention that uh, this is the part where i decide on uh, adding extra details uh, the gold trim and so on and so forth on certain bits and that was like the best decision instead of covering again everything to make like a mid-tone for the rune lord brass and keep like the rune lord bra brass which was my initial thought like a shadowy thing um, adding the just making certain elements gold seems like a better idea I know the box art kind of like said make everything gold all of the trims but i didn't like it it was too shiny too too much not like a world eater so yeah this one looks actually somewhat better in my opinion oh yeah uh also i forgot to mention uh, you might not see all of the corrections that I made, uh, all of the tiny mistakes that I made and I cleaned them up, but they were uh, quite less few than uh, what I used to do on uh, other uh, miniatures before this. Still, that did this miniature took quite a while and um, I'm look, really looking forward to doing some more up from Games Workshop some more characters rather than you know generic troops all right enough uh, wobbling uh, enough uh, jibber jabber for me so for, for the last time if you want a chance to win this uh, miniature hit the subscribe button and comment down below in the comments uh, blood for the blood god just right blood for the blood god you know you want to do and if you enjoy me painting miniatures and sharing you sharing them with the world so, uh, subscribe even if you don't want to win this miniature or not and if you enjoyed this video please share it to the friend hey who knows maybe he wins the miniature and gives it to you uh and don't forget to leave a like all right that's it. That's enough from me. I will let you see the final thing, the final touches I do on the miniature, the final assembly of all the pieces. I think, yes, I did that, but it was out of frame, so I decided to cut it. I remember that now. I apologize for this. Uh, I would have added it, but um, unfortunately, the way I was sitting in my chair and holding the miniature, and I did not take a look at the monitor i failed at um capturing it. so sorry about that and uh with that i will let you uh enjoy the final shots in just a few seconds don't forget to comment down below all right bye bye i'll see you in the next one